Hello everyone! How are you guys doing? I am so happy to see you all. I'm Anna Pomazanova, Rossmore Excursions Coordinator. Welcome to Around the World Travel Presentation. Today we're gonna go north a little bit and visit Lassen Volcanic National Park. Lassen Volcanic National Park is a geologically active area in Northern California, about 50 miles east of Redding. The park occupies the southernmost extent of the Cascade Range at the northern limit of the Sierra Nevada. The main features of the park are Lassen Peak, which reaches an elevation of 10,457 feet, and Cinder Cone, a 700-foot high volcanic cone. Lassen Peak and Cinder Cone were set aside as national monuments in 1907. They formed the core of the national park when it was established in 1916. Between 600,000 and 350,000 years ago, the western portion of the park's present area was occupied by Mount Tehama, a volcano that exploded and created a caldera some three miles wide. A number of volcanic summits, including Lassen Peak, mark the rim of the eroded caldera. The Lassen region was a hunting area for Native American people long before white settlers first saw Lassen. European immigrants in the mid-19th century used Lassen Peak as a landmark on their track to the fertile Sacramento Valley. Peter Lassen was one of the guides to those immigrants. Danish immigrant himself, he settled in Northern California in the 1830s. The Lassen Peak is named after Peter Lassen. From 1850 to 1851, several witnesses described seeing fire thrown to a terrible height and burning lava running down the sides in the area of the cinder cone. As late as 1859, a witness reported seeing fire in the sky from a distance, attributing it to an eruption. Starting in May 1914 and lasting until 1921, a series of minor and major eruptions occurred in Lassen. These events created a new crater and released lava and a great deal of ash. Fortunately, because of warnings, no one was killed, but several houses in the area were destroyed. Businessman, amateur photographer and author Benjamin F. Loomis began photo chronicling Lassen Peak's eruption in 1914. His photographs brought national attention to the volcano and helped to bring about the establishment of Lassen Volcanic National Park. Because of the eruptive activity and the area's stark volcanic beauty, Lassen Peak, Cinder Cone, and the area surrounding them were declared a national park on August 9, 1916. The 29-mile-long main park road was constructed between 1925 and 1931, just 10 years after Lassen Peak erupted. Near Lassen Peak, the road reaches 8,512 feet, making it the highest road in the Cascade Mountains. It is not unusual for 40 feet of snow to accumulate on the road near Lake Helen and for patches of snow to last well into July. In October 1972, a portion of the park was designated as Lassen Volcanic Wilderness by the United States Congress. 
the National Park Service manages the wilderness in keeping with the Wilderness Act of 1964 with minimal developed facilities, signage, and trails. After Mount St. Helens eruption in 1918, the United States Geological Survey intensified its monitoring of active and potentially active volcanoes in the Cascade Range. Monitoring of the Lassen area includes periodic measurements of ground deformation and volcanic gas emissions and continuous transmission of data from local network of nine seismometers to United States Geological Survey offices in Melna Park, California. Should indications of a significant increase in volcanic activity be detected, the United States Geological Survey will immediately deploy scientists and specially designed portable monitoring instruments to evaluate the threat. In addition, the National Park Service has developed an emergency response plan that would be activated to protect the public in the event of the eruption. Today, Lassen Volcanic National Park has an area of 166 square miles and is surrounded by Lassen National Forest. Steaming sulfur events, splattering mud pods, boiling springs, these hydrothermal features prove that the earth is very much alive in Lassen. Trails and overlooks let you explore geological wonders and give you access to see the volcanic activity amid a tranquil landscape of dense woods and sparkling lakes. The park encompasses a number of areas that are in different stages of plant regrowth following the volcanic eruptions of the early 20th century, notably the devastated area and chaos jumbles. The predominant plants here are huge ponderosa pines and stands of Douglas fir, lodgepole pine, and western hemlock. Wildflowers are abundant during the summer. Animal life includes deer, black bear, and other forest mammals, numerous migrating waterfowl frequent the park's lakes, especially in the fall. The park is crisscrossed with hiking trails, including a segment of the Pacific Crest National Scenic Trail that bisects the park from north to south. Cross-country skiing and snowshoe hikes are popular activity in winter. Located just beyond the southwest entrance to the Lassen Volcanic National Park, the Kom Yamani Visitor Center is a great place to start your trip to Lassen. In the 1930s, snow enthusiasts came to ski in this area. When the 1960 Winter Olympics were held at Squaw Valley, winter visitations soared here. Shortly after, a two-story chalet was built to accommodate visitors. Impacted by the opening of nearby ski resorts and multiple seasons of poor snowfall, the ski area closed in 1994. In 2008, the Kom Yamani Visitor Center opened at the historic site. Local materials were used to construct the visitor center, and the building's energy Output is largely offset by solar panels. Monitor sensor lights save energy, while the information desk and bathroom counters are composed of recycled glass donated by a company in San Francisco. The center offers visitors a chance to discover the geology 
and culture of the area through interactive exhibits. The 20-minute park film, The Story Behind the Landscape, provides an introduction to the origins of the park, as well as the significance of the park's biodiversity and volcanism. Visitor Center staff is available to answer questions directed at helping visitors plan for safe and enjoyable adventures. They can provide information on trails and park policies, issue wilderness permits for backcountry use, and answer questions about the surrounding area. The first thing you notice as you step out of the vehicle at Sulphur Works is the otter of rotten egg. Sulphur Works is the only geothermal feature in Lassen Volcanic National Park that is accessible from the main park road. The primary attraction at Sulphur Works, a boiling mud pod five feet across, bubbles next to the sidewalk. About five miles below the ground lies a giant pool of magma. Rainwater travels through the porous volcanic soil, mixes with magmatic chemicals, and is heated to steam, which causes the groundwater to boil. Microscopic organisms called exthermophiles thrive in the mud pod and they're being studied by scientists for their potential to cure genetic and infectious diseases. A black box measures the temperature of the mud pod on average 180 degrees Fahrenheit every 15 minutes. Scientists from Chico State University are conducting studies to gather information on what temperatures are normal for the area, as this restless landscape may well erupt again. Little Hot Springs Vista Overlook offers views of steam vents located at the bottom of a steep valley. There is no trail in this area. Visitors with binoculars may be able to spot bears and other animals along the creek. Surrounded by pine trees, Emerald Lake is a popular spot for a swim or a picnic lunch. The shallow waters support the growth of algae that gives the Emerald Lake its trademark color. Bumpus Hell is the largest area of hydrothermal activity in the entire park, covering about 16 acres. It is named for the unfortunate Kendall Bumpus, who stepped on a thin layer of crust, fell into scalding water and burned his leg that later was amputated. The three-mile-long round-trip trail takes visitors from the parking area into the basin where they walk on the boardwalk along the steaming pools, hissing fumarole, and unusually hued mud and dirt. The area also features one of the world's hottest fumarole, which they affectionately called Big Boiler since it's been known to reach temperatures of up to 322 degrees Fahrenheit. So while you hike in here, be sure to stay on the boardwalk. There is a lonely boulder at the end of the parking area. This big rock called Glacier Loretic was left here after the drifting glacier ice melted around it. Lake Helen is gorgeous, with stunning views of Lassen Peak and surrounding forest. Sitting at 8,200 feet above sea level, 
it remains frozen and covered in deep snow for most of the year. The lake is also one of the deepest in the park, reaching a whooping 110 feet. If you get the chance to see this beautiful lake in August or September, you will be amazed with a striking deep blue hue of the water. Originally named Sapphire Lake, it was later named after Helen Tanner brought the first woman to reach the summit of Lassen Peak in 1864. The towering Lassen Peak is a monument to the area's natural history. At 10,457 feet high, it is the world's largest plugged dome volcano. It is hard to imagine that a century ago it was rocked by violent eruptions that devastated the land for miles around. These eruptions from 1914 till 1917 were a driving force behind the establishment of Lassen Volcanic National Park. Over half a million visitors are drawn to the mountain each year. Some admire it from the bottom, while others take a strenuous five-mile round-trip hike to the summit. Next stop is devastated area. The result of the 1915 eruption of Lassen Peak, which towers above it, it was covered with mounds of volcanic rock and dead foliage. Since then, the forest reclaimed the area, and it doesn't exactly appear devastated today. A half-mile-long flat loop trail has numerous interpretive stations that provide information about the powerful eruption that reshaped this area, in addition to identifying some of the geologically notable boulders. Devil's Kitchen, Lassen's second largest hydrothermal area, is accessible via 4.2 mile round trip hike through Warner Valley Meadows and Forest. The trail crosses meadows, marshes, small footbridges and boardwalks before reaching its namesake hydrothermal area, the park's second largest. Here, a loop trail leads through boiling mud pods, fumaroles, steam vents, and boiling springs. Wander among the yellow and red mounds of the kitchen where steam whirls from fiery cracks in the ground, sounds of plopping, hissing, and belching fill your ears and the smell of something rotten lingers in the air. While hiking around mud pots and geothermal spots, stick to the trails and boardwalks. Some spots might seem solid, but you could very easily step into boiling mud and burn yourself. Located near the north entrance to Lassen, Manzanita Lake is perhaps the most famous lake in the park for the iconic views of Lassen Peak and Chaos Crags. The area is a downtown of Lassen Park where you'll find an expensive campground, cabins, and a convenience store. During the summer months, the Benjamin Franklin Loomis Museum offers ranger-led programs, videos, and exhibits related to Lassen Peak's eruption history and Lassen Park's geology. The 1.5-mile hiking trail winds gently around the lake through patches of willow trees and pines. Along the way, you'll encounter many different types of wildlife, including ducks, geese, muskrats, beavers, woodpeckers, and deer. If you like to fish, 
Manzanita Lake is also a great place to go to catch rainbow, brown, and brook trout. Kayak rentals are available on Manzanita Lake during the summer months. Located at the northern end of Lassen Park, Cinder Cone offers unique scenery and geology for those willing to make the effort necessary to visit this remote site. The 700-foot tall volcano makes for an incredible but challenging hike. Cinder Cone volcanoes are made of ash and debris that accumulate around a volcanic vent, so the ground on the trail is softer than normal. Plus, the hike is pretty steep. But anyone who makes it to the top is rewarded with views of the whole park and a chance to hike into the crater on top of the volcano. Lassen Park offers many other hikes. This easy hike through wildflower-filled meadows leads to a beautiful Kings Creek waterfall. When the sun goes down, Lassen gets dark, very dark. This is one of the best places in California to truly see the night sky, and park rangers lead occasional astronomy programs during the summer. The Dark Sky Festival, held in late July or early August, is a three-day bonanza of stargazing and astronomy activities, telescope viewing, constellation tours, and discussions and demonstrations by experts from NASA and the Astronomical Society of the Pacific. Dress warmly, temperatures can drop to freezing after dark, even in summer. Speaking of temperatures, because of its northern location and high elevation, Lassen Volcanic National Park never gets too hot. As you'll see, snow sticks around until July. The ideal season for visiting the park is pretty short. Usually the roads through the park open in June when the snow melts and then snow starts to set in again around October. Road closures can occur any time, so plan accordingly. Well, thank you so much for being with me today. I hope you guys have a chance to visit Lassen National Park. It's a very interesting place. I will see you next Wednesday for another Around the World Travel presentation. For now, please stay safe and healthy. Goodbye.